Where's her hand? And we are live with Kudu TV, episode four, All Things Cast Iron. With our founder and host, Stebbin Horn. All right, guys, we are very excited about this episode. For starters, it is the first time we've had what I would consider a real chef joining us on this program. So things are elevating oh my very fast. Um, in all seriousness, we are delighted to have Lynn Wells here from Greensboro, North Carolina, from Cast Iron Suppers. Um, time well spent. You can check out a lot of her handles on Instagram and on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. So. We're here to talk about cast iron cooking, and I thought, you know, I've been with Lynn at several events, whether it's Lamb Stock, um, Charleston Food and Wine, all these various festivals, and she's always a, a big part of that conversation. And so thank you so much for coming down. Oh my gosh, thank you, it's a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we've got a variety of dishes here that we're gonna talk about and, and go through, but let's kind of start at the beginning. Like Lynn, like, Tell us what got you into cooking and, and, and what got you into uh, being so involved with Kudu and, and what you found so interesting about it and kind of take us through that. So I probably didn't know it at the time, but when I was um, um, a young child, like just like Chris Bowles, I got involved with outdoor cooking in Girl Scouts. <laughs> Sorry, that was like a... Okay. Anyway, Girl so Scout. in Girl Scout, oh my gosh, that was, that was a setup, and I knew this would happen, but anyway, um, the beauty of live TV, so, um, but yeah, Girl Scouts, I got turned on to outdoor cooking, I love the smell of the outdoor fire, um, it just kind of woke me up in the morning with the coffee going on, and then later in life, as I was starting to get into my, to grilling, and found out about the kudu, it, it had everything and more that I had hoped for and really the cooking part started to answer your question with my you know with my mom as, as early as I can remember um, you know as, as soon as I could reach the stove I was learning how to cook from her okay and back then what were some of the things that she was cooking some of the dishes that she was preparing that you thought were unique and how those things were cooked and what kind of developed your cooking style up in North Carolina so, um, mom used cast iron skillets a lot, um, and I would watch her fry chicken, and she wasn't really teaching me, but I was watching her and like how to, you know, when to turn the chicken, how to fry pork chops, how to render fat off of meat. Um, Dad on Sunday morning would make chip beef on toast, always in a cast iron skillet, and I was just always in there watching, because it didn't take, you know, it didn't take me long to figure out if I was in there hanging out watching, I could eat too, so, <laughs> right. yeah, it was a win-win. Well, you know, when, when we developed the, the Kudu Grill, um, it, it kind of combined my life in South Africa with my life here in the South because their basic braai is a grill, and mm -hmm. that's it. And I felt like with the way that I was understanding how they like to cook over the open fire and the way they were utilizing it, I wanted to introduce the cast iron because it was so much a part of our life and my mother and, and you know my grandparents cooking that way. So. That's been something that people have really enjoyed, that out of the box with a Kudu grill, you get the 20 inch grill and you get the 16 inch cast iron, which in the world of cast iron is a really it's, big- It's unheard of. Yeah, yeah, it's a really big piece of cast iron. And so, um, you know, cast iron's kind of gone through a renaissance. You have a lot of kind of boutique um, niche companies coming up with some really creative cast iron and some wonderful things. And tell us just with the Kudu itself and with the Kudu cast iron application, what have you found as you've prepared <laughs> meals and personalized meals for people and, and cooked at events. So um, there's so many there's so many things but for events like like ladies um, hear me out like I you know I love the outdoors I love the smell of the, of the wood but I can take I can assemble this in less than five minutes I can put it in my car I can unload it put it back together and I've got this beautiful setup in less than five minutes anywhere at a catered event at um, you know, a dinner party, out in an intimate dinner party out on somebody's deck or patio, um, by the river, trout fishing, um, on the shooting range, I do sporting clays, um, you know, quail hunting's coming up. You can take this anywhere. So I loved that aspect of it. And then there, the other thing I like about it is I actually grill morning, noon, and night at my house. Um, 
I might want to cook something ahead, so I'll go ahead and get the grill started at 9 or 10 in the morning. It drives the neighbors crazy, um, the smell and everything. But if you're camping, you can, you know, it's almost like a morning to night um, feature where you've got this grill going, and then the coals, you can, you know, keep your coffee warm, you can do pancakes and have breakfast. Um, grill something or, or put something in the cast iron skillet and then at dinner you just keep the fire going and have a fire pit Yeah, we were actually talking about that earlier with the Approaching cooler weather, which I can't wait to have here in yeah. America um, You know hunt camps deer camps dove season um, Camping people getting outdoors still social distancing uh, This grill actually provides that opportunity to elevate that experience and so a lot of guys will talk to that have had this over the last year or two they're like you know when i get to the hunt camp we light the kudu and all weekend it stays hot exactly and we're doing something on it all day all night someone's coming in doing a lunch someone's leaving someone's coming back from a hunt and doing something for dinner we've got the fire pit going at night and it's a really cool product that like you said is portable mm -hmm. it can cook for a lot of folks and it's communal right. and actually it's almost like communal at a distance because we don't have to be so close that if someone is worried about social distancing or some of the things that we've got going on at this uh, day and time, you can still enjoy this in that environment. So that's something that we really, really yeah. take note of. And, and I'll just note, I've got, you know, I've got, I've cooked with gas grills. I've cooked, uh, I've got a, at home, I've got a kudu and I've also got another charcoal grill. Um, and I end up using the kudu more than anything because of that communal aspect. I'm, I'm outgoing, I'm extrovert, I'm, you know, I love being around people, but, you know, during, especially during the, you know, COVID pandemic, this has offered a, a really safe way to bring people together. Um, for instance, with football games, um, you know, if we're, if we're not in the parking lot with tailgate, we'll have a, you know, get you a kudu and you can bring the tailgate to your house. Um, everybody can keep their distance. You can do appetizers on here you can do your main course you can do your vegetables and then you can even do desserts one of the best things especially during cold weather is after you finish dinner and every you know kids are running around you've got what are we going to have for dessert come out you've got a fire pit and do some s'mores and it is the best crowd pleaser and then everybody leaves and at night you can just sit by a quiet you know fire pit and just kind of watch the coals go out i just i love it's my quiet time i just love it yeah that's kudu therapy so Let's talk about these amazing dishes that you've put together and take us through, um, we'll, we'll get some close-ups and we're actually going to put the recipes into um, the feed there so that everybody can access that because uh, what Lynn does with cast iron is just wonderful. But let's let's talk about these dishes and, and maybe, um, Tino, if you could bring a close-up and let Lynn kind of guide us through some of the things she's done here and the application. Sure. That you've used. So I'm going to start with the uh, sweet potato and sausage dish. This is a great breakfast dish. Um, I cook the sausage in the skillet over the on the grill on the hot coals and um, You know got got that browned up and then I kept the drippings in and added some chopped or diced sweet Vidalia onions and then I added the um, Sweet potatoes cooked them and then we just finished it off with some uh, nice egg that just all cooked right here on the kudu and then we've got this wonderful one of my favorites um, poached butter poached chicken thighs Wow. So I actually cooked this and it's in a beautiful hand forged skillet that Jed Curtis in Roanoke, Virginia made. He's a blacksmith with heart and spade forge, but this is just a great skillet. I've just garnished it with some thyme, but all of this are seasonings, spices, and butter that's cooked with the um, chicken thighs. And then and let's, get, let's talk yeah. about that real quick. Like, sure. look at this, how we set this up. Like we needed more uh, space. To, to cook and obviously this is cooked in and rendered down it's bubbling a little bit but we used one of our charcoal starters and flipped it over almost for an additional eye so if you're needing more space the kudu allows you to cook at multiple levels and both vertically and laterally which you've long talked about is such a neat feature to maintain your food um, talk about how you um, said you know what you love about the kudu is that you're not having to run in and out uh, of the house um, oh my gosh so one of the things that was just wearing me out is I would I would love to grill, but I was taking a trip. I would do the fruit first, and then I would do the vegetables next, and I would, you know, take them off, run into the kitchen, cover them up, and then I'd put the chicken or the steaks on, you know, then they'd be ready, and I'd take, and, and I'm just running back and forth. 
I don't have to take but one trip into the kitchen, actually two, is to from the kitchen and to the kitchen because I can raise these um, different, the grate, I can uh, raise it or lower it depending on my temperature needs. Um, and it just saves me coming, call me lazy, call me smart, but uh, it just cuts down on all the running back and forth into the kitchen. And then to go with the wonderful chicken thighs, so I would like grill these vegetables to get the nice char on them and the seasoning. And then when they're done on the grate, I just put them in this plancha to keep them warm. And then we've added these beautiful chanterelles and lobster mushrooms that were just freshly forged yesterday from Tino Sheridan here in Macon, Georgia. All right, so believe it or not, Tino does contribute to the cause. <laughs> we appreciate that. So again, you know, here you've got a situation where you're cooking over the grill, you're transferring from the grill into the cast iron for maintenance to keep it warm, to get some additional smoky flavor. And now your grill's freed up to finish a protein, to cook another mm -hmm. you know, dish, whatever you're doing, and you're still just staying outside you're enjoying the fire, you get that fire therapy as we call it. Right. You, everyone around you gets to watch it mm -hmm. and see how it moves and be a part of it. And and that's inclusive and that's something that we really preach at, at Kudu is bringing everyone together kind of around the food and the fire. Mm -hmm. So these are absolutely gorgeous dishes. And I've done, um, I've also, we'll add, I've also done, I've done biscuits on the Kudu and then I made this wonderful cobbler, blueberry and peach cobbler. Um, in my mom's cast iron skillet that's probably 75 years old, but you can actually do baking. Um, I did, you know, to get the top brown, I would cover that in foil. I've even put skillets like in with the coals around them and with the lid um, or, you know, with, a, with foil over them and then put some hot coals over it so that you get that browning on top. That's right. So just like the way someone would use the Kudu Dutch oven and put the coals on the top, just with the cast iron, you can put some layers of aluminum foil and add some heat to the top to brown down. So we've got a question coming in from Kudu TV. Tina, what you got? Lynn, for someone who didn't have their cast iron passed down to them, mm -hmm. uh, how does somebody get involved with cast iron and cast iron cooking? That, th thank you for um, asking that question. It's a really good one. So yeah, so I did inherit these. I grew up watching my mom cooking with them, but there are some great, um, companies now the lodge is really good smithy ironware has some beautifully handcrafted um skillets you can get that those are those are pre-seasoned a lot of folks um you know have mentioned they're intimidated by cast iron they're actually low maintenance if you know what to do um you know you just sort of wipe them out and you know put some linseed oil in there and store them in the in the cabinet but you can find these at ace hardware you can also look up, Google any uh, blacksmith in your area. Like I mentioned, Jed Curtis is in Roanoke, Virginia on Hart and Spade Forge. He's got some beautiful um, pieces if you go on his website. But just you know, kind of Google um, cast iron in my area, but the Lodge and Smithy are, are two well-known brands. And, and we talked about the, the longevity of these products. This is what makes these things heirloom is the fact that with the proper maintenance, um, you can cook on these every night, day in, day out, and use them, and they are going to stay um, just the way they were, and, right. and then you can pass them down. So, Tina, you've got another question. Yeah. how, Lynn, how did you start that butter chicken? Did you cover it or keep it open as it cooked? Great question. So, I put the, I seasoned the chicken thighs, and again, um, Stebbin mentioned that we will be including the recipes, but I seasoned the chicken thighs, and then I put pats of butter um, over them and put the foil over it and then just stuck it right here on the grate and like you know could, the, the heat was probably a medium medium yeah. medium high and uh, cooked it covered so at the, as the butter melted it became just a nice poaching um, so we were pulling leg. coals <coughs> under and we were managing that four to five second temperature that we talk about for medium um, Hold on a second. <laughs> so we um we so we were managing that medium temperature at the four to five second mark where you can keep your hand over the coals until you can count to about four or five and then you know that's the level to be around four hundred or so degrees. And so that was a way that we would me measure that and as the coals kind of weakened we would just pull more coals under there to keep that going. But I did cover it with foil to, to answer the question, I did cover it with foil and it poached for about 30, 35 minutes. Okay, Tina. How do you manage dual cooking 
with cast iron and the kudu grill. Oh, let me take this one. You got it, oh, this is great. So we, we, I talk to folks about this all the time because you have a 24 inch fire base, you've got a 20 inch grill, and you've got a 16 inch um, cast iron skillet. So they obviously at the same height aren't going to fit all over the fire base. So what's fun about the kudu is that I can be grilling over the entire grill and I can have just a portion of my cast iron which is gained heat and it's going to be retaining heat. So then as I'm cooking in my cast iron skillet, I simply can just turn it. And as I turn it, now this side is hot still and this side will warm up quickly and I can keep a nice even heat inside the cast iron while using the entire grill surface. So that's a way mm -hmm. when you see like videos or people that are stacking food, it might be catching some smoky flavor, might be getting some, um, you know, remnants of some additional cooking or finishing, but it's not getting heat because it's getting blocked. Right. And so the kudu allows this, you know, lateral movement so that everything does get direct heat and you can use the accessories as needed. Okay, Tina. Stevan, how deep is that fire pit and do the coals ever get blown out? So it's, you're gonna have to have a lot of um, charcoal in here to the point that you wouldn't wanna even get near it for it to get to the point that it's gonna be blowing out. So it's a five inch deep um, fire base and it's flat. And that's what makes the difference between a bry and a fire pit. A South African bry has a flat bottom so that you can manage your coals by piling them up in different areas. So I'm managing temperature in the fire base and then I'm managing temperature by raising and lowering it from the surface. So with every other grill, if you think about it, they're all rounded. They're all rounded in the bottom, so everything collects to the center, and you've got one temperature coming out of that uh, fire apparatus. So this is what makes this grill so much versatile, makes it lighter, mm -hmm. quicker to get started, and allows you on a weeknight to just put a little bit of charcoal in there, cook a couple chicken breasts and some vegetables for dinner, and, and get back out of there. So, or to, to their question, you can, we've burned, I don't know, a cord of wood over a weekend and never dump the ash out of there because as that charcoal cooks down, it literally turns to dust. Mm -hmm. And so you won't have the issue of it being so much. Now, if you've got a hot fire and you've got a lot of charcoal in there, if you're managing that, it certainly, some of that could come out. That's why I put brick pavers down here. So if one little bit fell out or something, I wouldn't have a problem with it. And you know, cast iron skillets have some weight to them. And that's what I love. Like, you know, there's quite a bit of weight on this grate and it's holding it beautifully. We could add, probably add another smaller skillet and, and just be, and be fine. Well, it's and very remember stable. when they were um, at, at, we were at Lambstock and someone had a uh, massive uh, pan full of water, right, pot of right. water on here. No telling how heavy that was. And the kudu wasn't even worried about it. I right. mean, it, they were just shocked at how sturdy and robust mm -hmm. the system is, mm -hmm. so. All right, Tina. So back back to the cast iron. This is a question for each of you. Favorite cast iron dishes? Ooh. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, well, I will say um, fried chicken is one. And again, it's all about, um, because it's, one, it's got a lot of memories to it, but also it um, retains the heat so well, and it's an even heat distribution. So fry, frying chicken is, um, is great. I also use it for if, if anybody if anybody other than me likes cream chip beef on toast um, that's just a childhood favorite but that's really good if you have a big skillet um, seafood is just like wonderful like a paella is yeah. a great thing to do on the kudu with a cast iron skillet what do you yeah, like my, mine would be root vegetables uh -huh. I mean I go back to the fact that people always talk about the kudu vegetables that when they cook vegetables on this this system it is amazing the amount of flavor mm -hmm. and, and the style it cooks. So I love to do root vegetables that will sit in olive oil and right. simmer down over time as I'm doing other things. And you just have that, that nice flavor and it, it's really hearty, but it's, it's very healthy too. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. See you now. So Stebbin, um, Shay Lavi asks, which charcoal is best to use? So we would, you know, we appreciate that question. My favorite charcoal is charcoal that's made in South Africa from the acacia tree that we actually sell our wood from. It is so dense and long burning um, and has an, an incredible flavor um, that is, is very subtle and, and not acrid. There's some really good premium charcoal on the market. Um, you know, there's, there's Jealous Devil, there's um, Fogo, um, there's, you know, uh, there's um, Kamado Joe. 
that are these um, charcoals from South America that have a really good uh, low and burn to them and, and, and they're great. Now most of your charcoal coming out of America, even Texas, um, you know, we can have this argument all day long but we compare this stuff all the time and you just really have to get out of the U.S. to find a good premium charcoal. And I use, um, actually I use um, a mix of charcoal and this is just an, um, I mean this wasn't planned or anything but Kudu sells a wonderful um, wood for the Kudu grill and I just put one of those logs on top of my, my coals and it just got a, a smoky flavor and it's really slow burning that adds so much flavor but yeah I agree with um, with Stevan on all of the brands that he mentioned. Yeah. Another question from Shay Lavi, is there a special wood that you recommend? Yeah, that would go back to the acacia. I mean, you depends on what you're cooking. I think if, if, if Shay were a chef, he would know that it really <laughs> comes down to the dish and how you want, what type of smoke you want to impart on that. Um, so uh, that, that's what I would recommend. And I use a, um, I use a dry oak. Um, I'm dying to try pecan um, up uh, my buddy, Matthew Deaton up in um, Virginia uses uh, pecan or pecan, depending on where you're from. But um, I use oak um, just because I happen to have a load. But um, yeah, it, that's I love the acai wood. Okay, Tina. So back to the cast iron. Could y'all talk a little bit about how to care for cast iron? Sure. Uh, the the kudu cast iron um, comes to you and it, it's it's lightly seasoned, but it, it doesn't have what I would consider a finished seasoning on it. So. Um, I like to use uh, like flaxseed oil, which has a very high um, smoke point, and, and that's the one that I go to where I will season. I will I will get that oil on the um, on the on the pl on the plancha or the cast iron skillet, and then I will put that into the oven um, for a significant amount of period at over 450 degrees. Um, I will then take it out, let it cool, apply another layer, take it out, let it cool, apply another layer. This will take me essentially a, an evening to do so. Um, and, and that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you like to season your cast iron? So um, I've actually you know I've got one that's not seasoned and it just takes a lot of time with low heat, just like you mentioned. But also in caring for the seasoned, you just want to make sure after you wash them that they are super dry. Like you want to make sure that there's no moisture at all. And if you you know are afraid that there might be some moisture left, just put that in a, a and, an oven that's really turned down really low. And you're not washing it with soap. Right, right. You're, right. You're, I'm just kind of white. I mean, it sounds unsanitary, but it's not. It just, I mean, of course, I have had to like get a scrubby, you know, a scrubby out and to just use hot water, but I don't put any dish detergent or anything, but it just make sure the key is making sure it's dry because if they are left outside, they will rust. Sure. Tina. So Bob asks Lynn, we all know that seasoning cast iron should be done in the oven, but I read that uh, the setting should be on the oven cleaner, which is the highest temperature setting. Is that true? That's a great question that I would probably need to do some research on. Um, now you've got my curiosity up, Bob, but um, it's a good question. I um, actually do my oven cleaning the old fashioned way. Um, I just like don't trust the oven being on for, for five hours unless I'm doing a uh, pork shoulder or something overnight, but um, but yeah, that's something interesting that I'll I'll definitely look into. Yeah, I've always just turned it up to the highest setting, but uh -huh. obviously it would go, it would be more hot to have it um, on that setting. So. Yeah, good question. All right, well, um, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This, this has been, been an awesome experience. The the food that you've created here is absolutely amazing, guys. Um, we're going to be putting these recipes up on. Um, on, on the on all of our links so please check that out please follow lynn she's doing some amazing things and we just appreciate uh, all you do for kudu and all the support you've given us as we've tried to build this business one fire at a time well thanks it's a great quality product all right guys well that's it for kudu tv episode four we'll be back with i hope we can get chris bowles back on the show um, he'll be a part of our next episode, and we look forward to uh, having him back. We've really missed him on this episode.